few months after I'm still chasing these ghosts like that dude on Casper Ben Frank, Andrew Jack, Tommy J Nigga try and stack these chips like Frito-Lay Gotta get it, we the next to blow And any nigga disrespect, he be the next to go It's mob life or no life till they bury me I bet this gang gang shit be the death of me All I know is hustle, all I know is win All I know is hustle, all I know is get it in all I know is hustle, all I know is win All I know is hustle, all I know is get it in All I know is hustle, all I know is win All I know is hustle, all I know is get it in All I know is hustle, all I know is win All I know is hustle, all I know is get it in Stop shit, and I'm back And I'm gonna be covering Michael Sharp tonight I had somebody to request that from me, so you know what I'm saying? I had to look into it and get to it, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never had actually heard of Michael Sharp before, so I had to look into the situation and read up on it before I actually, you know, get into it. So I'm going to read what's public record. It said, Michael Sharp was a leader of a substantial drug dealing organization named after its principal distri distribution point in New Orleans, the intersection of Phillip, of Phillip Street and Clara Street. Numerous witnesses testified about charge management of the Philip and Clara drug ring in 1995 and 96. For example, Lloyd Locke testified that he sold heroin for short. Gregory Cooks testified that he sold heroin for short and acted as short's enforcer. Law enforcement officers also testified that to testify as to short's involvement in the drug trade. For example, for example, Officer Officer Tim. Bayard of the New Orleans Police Department testified that on September 15, 1995, he observed Short leaving 4507 South Prairie Street carrying a bag. When Short noticed Bayard, he threw the bag away. The police retrieved the bag and found that it contained 15,000 cash. The police seized the money after drug dogs alerted the presence of illegal substances on it. Officer Jake's Officer Jake Schnapp testified that on May 14, 1995, he and his partner observed Sharp give a brown paper bag to Cooks. When Cooks saw the police, he threw the bag to the ground. The police, de the police detained both men. While they did so, while, he while doing so, Yanni Cooks picked up the bag and began walking into a house at 905 4th Street, or 903 4th Street. The police apprehended Ms. Cooks and searched the bag. The bag contained 5,000 cash. Moreover, a search warrant of, a search warrant of the 903 4th Street residence, 45 Clear Bastion. Wait. Moreover, a search one of a search a search of the 903 4th Street residence found five clear plastic bags of white powder, later determined to be heroin, and a loaded pistol. The prosecution also presented numerous recordings of, of phone conversations between Short and other directly and others directly implicating Short to a drug trade. For the purpose of this appeal, two additional events are important. The search of the car driven by Lamont Robertson, Lerman Robertson. Damn, that was Lerman. I went to school with Lerman, Black Lerman. Wrong live Lerman. And the murder of Derek Harbert. On June 25th, 1996, Lerman Robinson was driving his mother in law in his mother in law's Pontiac Pontiac. Short, who had been riding in a Jeep Cherokee with Cooks and John Bryant, waved Robinson down. Robinson stopped the Pontiac in the intersection so that Short could in enter the car. Officer Raymond Viet of the New Orleans Police Department saw Robinson's Pontiac blocking the intersection and pulled the car over. Officer Viet's ex the occupants to step out of the car and conduct a routine pat down. He felt a large bulge in Short's pocket, which turned out to be $891 in cash. Viet had previously arrested Short on a narcotics-related offense, so he called a K-9. He called a K-9 officer to determine whether the money contained traces of narcotics. The drug dog alerted to the money. Officer William, Officer William Kingman, an ATF agent assigned to the to a to a local drug task force, assisted Viet. When Kingman looked when Kingman looked inside of the Pontiac, he saw three cellular phones. 
he picked up the phones, removed their backs, and followed the instructions on how to retrieve the number assigned to the phones. One of the numbers Kingsman obtained was 404-694-7126, which he passed to a DEA, a DEA agent. The drug task force later obtained a warrant to tap these phones. This wiretap was the source of much of much of the evidence that led to Short's conviction. The second important event was the murder of Derek Harbert, who was acting as an informant for the DEA. The government presented evidence that Harbert had been a drug dealer and an enforcer for Short's organization. Short and Harbert had a falling out because Harbert had been stealing drugs and money from Short. One day that Harbert was murdered, on the day that Harbert was murdered, Shaw threatened to kill Harbert after seeing him at, at the Philip and Clara intersection. After making this threat, Shaw had a conversation with Troyell Ross and Kevin Brown. Ross then shot and killed Harbert in front of a number of, pe a, a number of eyewitnesses. Ross left the scene with Cooks. Cooks went to pay phone. Cooks went to the pay phone at the corner of Philip and Clara. Shark called Cooks at the payphone and explained, We got that bitch. That bitch did. We got that bitch. A little while later, Shark gave Ross $2,500, stating, This is a little something for handling that. Shark and a number of co conspirators were charged in a multi count indictment. Shark was charged in 10 counts. He was found guilty on all counts. The district court imposed four concurrent life sentences on counts one through four, plus a mandatory additional five-year prison sentence on count five, the firearm offense. The district court imposed additional prison terms on the remaining counts, but these terms all run concurrently with the life sentences. Short now appeals. Short argues 11 points of error on appeal. We address these points in turn. Shaw argues first that Agent Kingman violated rights secured by the Fourth Amendment when the agent obtained the telephone numbers assigned to the cell phones found in a Pontiac being driven by Lerman Robinson. He got a point there. Because as soon as I read that part, I said that too. I'm like, that was really a violation, you know what I'm saying? Because he needed a search warrant to tap the, to mess with them phones from the gate. So him even going behind the man and sneaking, getting the numbers to the phones, like that was a whole trick in itself. So I said that should have been some type of violation right there. So he right. So, um, Shard, Shard argues that because this search was improper, the wiretap of one of the phone's numbers discovered in, a, in that search was illegal and therefore all the fruits of that wiretap should have been suppressed. Pre preliminary, however, we address the government's con contention that Shark does not have standing to assert this argument under the under the president of Supreme Court and this court a passenger is an a, a passenger in an automobile generally lacks standing to challenge a search of that automobile especially when this is no indication that the items being searched belongs to the passenger so damn that's how they got him you feel me he could have got him if so they basically saying that Lerman should have been arguing that and they could have suppressed the evidence damn fly and got in here i hate them flies but by him by, by by sharp being a passenger in the car he didn't have that he didn't have grounds to argue that so that was a that was a little loophole they blocked right there sharp point sharp points to no evidence from the search or any or illegal theory that supports an argument that this general rule that this general rule does not apply to the search of robinson's pontiac and the cell phones found in that vehicle. Shaw did not have the phones on his person, nor were the phones in a location that indicated that the phones were his, nor did he indicate to the police that the phones were his. Under the cases cited above, Shaw does not have standing to challenge the search of Robinson's Pontiac or the cellular phones found in the vehicle. We therefore reject his Fourth Amendment challenge. See what I'm saying? Shark next argues, that the district court error by refusing to instruct the jury that in order to find Shaw guilty of being an organizer, supervisor, or manager of a continuing criminal enterprise, the jurors must agree unanimous, unanimously, unanimously as to the identities of five, at least five of the people being organized, supervised, or managed. 
This court previously rejects this next exact argument in United States versus Lent. But man, yeah, he, he had a lot of people that got caught up on this indictment too. Let me see if I can get some of the names because I, earlier I had seen the names of the people indicted and they had a bunch of names. A bunch of them. Now hold up. They say on January 10, 1997, a federal grand jury ret returned a 27 count third superseding indictment charging Mr. Sharp with the following conspiring, conspiring to distribute heroin and cocaine in violation of 18 U.S.C engaging in a continuing criminal enterprise involving a conspiracy to possess heroin in violation of 21 USC, initially killing Derek Harbour in furtherance of a criminal enterprise, continuing criminal enterprise. Damn. Right, on May 6, 1998, Mr. Short timely filed a notice appeal See, this wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to read this. I'm trying to get to the nitty gritty for y'all. All right, this might be it right here. Let me see. I think this is it right here. Yeah, I had a request to do Michael Short, so I actually had to look into Michael Short. Because like I said, you know what I'm saying? I've been around, but I never even had heard of Michael Short before. Probably know him as something else. So these the party names are Denise Anthony, that was a defendant. Barrowhead, long lived Barrowhead. Barrowhead was killed a few years ago, right around Martin Luther King somewhere. Kevin Brown, Ke Keith Butler, Ronald Keith Butler, Chop, Carl Christmas, Gregory Cook, Kim Green, Daryl Joseph, Isaac Kitt, Lloyd Lloyd Locke, Nate, Troyell Ross, Kimberly Shaw, Michael Shaw, Shannon Thompson, Turkey. Corey Wilson. Damn. Yeah, that was a that was a big old indictment. Like a lot of people got caught up on that. So y'all get in that comment section, man. Let me know if y'all remember anything about this Michael Short and the PNC crew. You know what I'm saying? Hit that like button. Make sure the notifications turned on. Hit that subscribe button if you already have it. And stay plugged. Slum 1200 GGI Mob shit. I just hit my shooter, told him knock his head off. Leave him on the block. On the block. Yeah, it's fuck the ops. Fuck the Riding ops. with the mob. With the mob. Lock up in my pocket. Up in my pocket. 30 in the Glock. That's about a hundred shots. I get it out the mud. Out the or I get it in blood. in blood. Yeah, I'm the blood. I'm show love like bug. Like bug. Trying to get my family and my niggas out the hood. About the hood. Pedal to the metal roller. Op up in the wood. Like I'm sure, like I'm smoking on that Manny Pacquiao, that be that good. That be